in 20 in 2022 the, the app was doing about 13 million dollars in revenue and it had about a million daily active users um and it actually just sold for 50 plus million dollars and uh gene nicholas again the founder of the company was the only employee uh, all the development work he was able to do himself, but he also con contracted it out wow. to subcontractors. But literally, he was a solo f solo employee, solo founder since the beginning. And again, the business was doing $13 million a year. Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another another week. Happy Sunday. How y'all how y'all both doing? I'm feeling good. I know I'm feeling good. Uh, you know, new places coming together, still unpacking, and uh, um, yeah, just feeling good in general. Um, and have uh, yeah, just been chilling most of this weekend. So I've been excited to to do the podcast. Uh, what about you, Brian? What's going on with you? Yeah, man. So uh, my guy, Warren, you know, he came from London and he he tapped in with me for the week out here in Chicago. And so it was a uh, it was a beautiful week, man. We had a, a lot of um, great brainstorming, made some fire meals, actually ate a ton of fire food, man. Uh, I, when y'all come to Chicago, I, I got to take y'all to my Senegalese spot, man. It's, 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 it's one of them spots. But, oh, man. Yeah, man. Overall, we'll overall, food. it, 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 it uh, Senegalese. And so, uh, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I'm telling you, bro, you ain't had no onions like this. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. The, uh, the, uh, Probably the onions not. and the mint tea slapping. And so overall, yeah, wow. it, was, it was a good week, man. Chicago does have like some really good food spots, low key, like some really like, I, when I think about like some really good food that I've had, it's definitely been in Chicago. I got some family there, so I grew up coming there a lot and mm -hmm. we would definitely hit like some of those really good spots, especially like, um, like Mexican or just like any, yeah. any authentic, any authentic, like any, basically anything authentic you can possibly think of. It's at least one spot in Chicago that got it and it's probably the best spot. For sure. Yeah, no, I just, sure. I just started getting tapped in with food. the. Uh, I just started getting tapped in with the with with with, with the Mexican food out here and. Okay, I got a recommendation for you. Let me find the name. I'm gonna ask my cousin who lives there to give me All the right. name, and I'm, I'm gonna send it to you. Busta. Right. Say less. Say less. Busting, bro. But yeah, let's uh let's let's hop into the straight the the, the first topic uh that we wanted to to go into. So we got to talk about the headline that has literally been dominating the news for what the past week I would say. I think this is what started started last week. What those five individuals that uh, have lost their lives in the in the submersible. So uh, apparently five five people were uh, doing a doing a tour. I guess it was five four crew and one pilot. We're doing a exploration of the Titanic, and uh, I think about an hour, according to the news at least, I'm going off the top of my head because I was kind of looking into this all week. I think like an hour and 30, hour and 45 minutes after their uh, descent in the water, they lost uh, contact with like the land base. And so for a minute, like the, the land crew had no idea what happened. So of course they contact the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard launched this massive search Tons of agencies. Uh, I think the Navy, the U.S. Navy was involved. Canada was involved. The French Navy was involved. Like tons of tons of people were came together to conduct this search. Australia even like there was yeah a, uh, yeah I want to say Australia played a role in it as well. They did. They did. So folks like countries were donating tools, like resources, ships, all type of all types of equipment to help uh, launch an investigation. Um, and come to find out, I think it was maybe three days, four days after the accident, maybe five days, I think maybe four or five days this was after, days. after yeah. the sub went missing. Um, I think it was the Coast Guard came across some debris, which they, they were able to obtain. They had to run some tests. They ran some tests. The debris ended up coming back as being part of the submersible. So then obviously that lets them know that those people most likely have, have, have perished already. Uh, and so this has been just a crazy story. There's a lot of things that we can talk about, um, but the business, the 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 actual company that was putting on the the uh, excursion, I think it's called Ocean View, um, and this company has been around for a long time. And the CEO and founder of Ocean View was actually the pilot who was on board and, and actually lost his life. And um, 
you know, he was a former aerospace uh, engineer. And so there's some, there's some interesting things here that we can kind of go into, but I'll stop right there. So I think that's like the, the general facts of the story. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, rest in peace to the, everybody on there. Um, it's a, it's a tragic end. Um, Cause I know like when the story first broke out, it was like, uh, uh, there's only so many hours left. And I wonder, I, I think that's what kept people coming back every day, like every day to, to just kind of like see what, more was going on because it wasn't a closed story it was still pending and um and i guess i think later we found out it was um it was like an explosion which i think to some people uh uh would be better than for example uh like you know kind of being in there i, I saw a lot of people talking about like the idea of like being in that submarine or submersible and just in this tight space, knowing you only have a few hours, I think that was like um, one of the things that made that like a like a very huge story. But uh, it's sad. Um, I, I will say though, um, the 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 founder. Uh, I don't know much about that founder, but clearly um, he took risk to another level. Um, I, I think when I saw the capsule itself, uh, I was like. These are some bold people. <laughs> like these are some <laughs> bold people, man. Like, um, and uh, and I also like uh, I, I do wanted to, to say I, I wasn't. Uh, there's so many different sentiments around it. Uh, I think the the main thing though is that we it's sad regardless because people passed away for for you know. Um, but I did see people. You know, some people were taking it too far. You know, uh, I saw online uh, some people were. were where you know uh, there are a lot of people making jokes at the expense of this, and I and there was multiple different I guess viewpoints on that. But what I think is that what I thought underlined a lot of this stuff is that people just were struggling, or there was many pockets of people that were struggling to understand maybe the mindset of of what is it is it because most people say okay the the Titanic legendary movie timeless classic. But then they don't, and they might even go to the theaters. They might even go to a park and it has some type of experience. But most people are not really trying to dive, you know, miles under in the water to see it. So I think people are trying to understand. And then you add on the fact that this was an experience that was very expensive, you know. Um, and so they kind of categorize in this like $250,000 only- $250, a, a ticket, like. Yeah, to clarify Jeez. on the expensive piece, because that's expensive as fuck. Like that's a that's yeah. a new Lamborghini, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Right, right. And that what's interesting is that it had a price. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would have thought mm. if if the risk is my life, that that's gonna be a free trip. Um, and I say that to say <laughs> like I cause, because I, here's what I think about it. I think about it like an experimental drug, right? Like like experimental drug might come out and or it's not approved by the FDA. They'll give it to me for free for clinical trials to prove it so they can get it out, you know, in a more public yeah. like so like uh, in this case, you're paying two hundred fifty thousand plus. You have the risk of like just I mean, what we saw, saw happen. I just I think that's where people are struggling to. And I think someone was like, well, that's only something that rich people do. So, you know, um, but I guess there's, you know, mm-hmm. a bunch of different sentiments online. But I've been seeing that. uh some of the jokes, obviously, everybody has their own taste, but some of them may, may have been a little, I think, a little too far. But uh, overall, I think it just mis- people were just trying to grasp their minds around what makes you do an experience so risk taking. And I guess there's our general injunction that does exist. There's a lot of extreme sports. People climb to the top of Mount Everest or try to, and they don't make it. We don't understand those people yeah. either. But I guess in this case, I don't, Honestly, I don't know. It's different because you don't. I don't know if it takes 250 to to start climbing Mount Everest. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's most of the time you're not dropping a Lamborghini to risk your life. Too. Yeah, honestly, I kind of understand it a little bit, right? From from the perspective of like, I, I personally like adventure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I like doing different experiences. Me and my wife, we travel a lot. We go to a lot of different places. And usually, whenever we travel somewhere, like. We try to do an experience, you know what I'm saying? Like something that we've never done before. And obviously, like there's a a spectrum of like risk that we're willing to take on, you know what I'm saying? But like we've done things like scuba diving, which is arguably really risky. Like there's probably more people to lose their life scuba diving every single year than people that probably lose their life going in a submersible annually, right? So like 
you know, we've taken on that risk. Or like, my wife wants to go like uh, parasailing. I'm not doing that. That's just not me. I don't like I don't like heights like that. You know what I'm saying? But that's really risky too. People <laughs> people die in that way. So I totally get it for people who are like yeah. those adventure seekers who in in thrillers. And then I also understand the other part of like the the history of the Titanic, right? Like, it's one thing to like see the movie, but I feel like seeing it with your own eyes that up close, like. I could totally get like the I, I could totally get like how somebody would want that if you know what I'm saying, especially if you aren't like afraid of of deep sea diving. You know what I'm saying? Because some people like spend like do deep sea diving. That's not like a not that's you know that's pretty common. So like if you're really into that, I could totally see how like being a part of history or being up close and personal with history can you know give you an experience that you really can't you you can't get from just watching. So. Again, everybody got their own thrill. Same with a mountain, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you can sit back and see the mountain, but it's something else about like climbing that mountain, I feel like. So yeah, and conquering and it. So conquering. I think there's something to that that um that I can kind of see out of it. But nevertheless, obviously it's, it's incredibly risky. I um, mean they shit, they knew it. They signed a waiver for it, but nobody ever thinks like, oh, I'm gonna have to this, this is gonna be for yeah. real. <laughs> you know? Yeah, nobody thinks it. Yes, yeah, so it's trusting yeah. the founder. They, they definitely trusted the founder. You know, they trusted the founder so, heavy. And and to be honest, the founder went down there with them, so I right. can see why they would. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't think any of us would. Most of us wouldn't actually. But uh, the fact that the founder is well, going down there with you, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, even if we could though, even if we could. Well, though, so if it was free, if, could, if it was free, if it was free, like, Brian, um, would you do it? No. Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, me, 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 and, me and water ain't got that kind yeah, of relationship. You. I got you. I got you. <laughs> now, yeah, if you tell me, yeah. like, I, I'm I'm the opposite of you, Dre. So I I won't go deep, uh, you know, sea diving, but I'll, I'm not afraid of heights. So I'll, I'll do yeah, some crazy see? stuff. I, like I'm that. I'm good on that. I'm not, I'm not doing nothing in the air unless it's an airplane, bro. I'm good. I'm good. And I barely don't like doing that. <laughs> but. Let me let, I just, let me I like say this around. because I like sailing around. Is, I can do ATVs. <laughs> I can do all that. Like, but I, nah, nah. <laughs> so me and Max. This this <laughs> this is my perspective on it. I think it's um, I think it's one of those cases of like good decision making, mm. bad outcome, right? Because like it's 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 hard to judge decision making based off of the outcome. And the reason why I want to say that is like, um, like. When I, when, when, I, when I think about the, the rationale behind it, right, I think before uh, I have read somewhere like, you know, the submersible had taken 50 different attempts at going to the Titanic, but it only actually went to the Titanic Titanic 20, uh, well, 12, 12 times before. So the but the reason why I didn't make it to the Titanic those other times was because of like things like weather and like waves, all these different variables that you have to take into consideration. But the fact of the matter is, like when those things were good, it made it down there twelve yeah. times and made it back up. And so, they're, like I can see how that gives them confidence. I think the second thing too is like um, CBS; they did a really good special on uh, just the day, the, the the day before everything, right? And what was what was interesting about it was they showed like the check the checklist. and so it showed them like all the different things that they checked before going mm -hmm. going through. And uh, like, it's really rigorous, right? Like if three things, if three things out of like, it was hundreds of things are off, hmm. they call it off. Right. Yeah. And so it, to me, they had a very rigorous process. Yes. There were some people that talked about like their parts being flimsy and things of that nature, but they did that. Th like, it wasn't, it wasn't like they, they, they just were like, Oh, like I think the way it's yeah, sure, portrayed sure. in the media. And so yeah. I feel like they had a good decision making process in terms of like actually making that decision of like we're going to get in the water we're we're, we're really going to do this. It just happened to be about a, a bad outcome and kind of like something I think this is just a very interesting yeah. case of like science, right? Um just because uh are y'all familiar with I think it was called the Deep Flight Challenger. Richard Branson had a Yeah, yeah, I did hear about. I I heard James Cameron yeah. talking about this. I think he was like Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it, it, it was like the, one of the first submarines built out of uh, carbon fiber. But the thing that a lot of people are pointing out about it, you know, because the the Titan was built out of uh, carbon fiber as well, was um, when that was made and Richard Branson uh, bought it. Richard Branson originally was planning on you know using it for deep you know uh, sea diving and things of that nature. But the manufacturers told him like carbon fiber you know isn't built 
to, you know, make those consistent trips over and over without the material weakening, weakening. So why carbon fi fiber, it's up there with titanium and all that other stuff in terms of initial strength. It just breaks down, you know, a lot quicker mm -hmm. and over time compared to a lot of these other materials. And so like, I'm actually like, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but I think the thing about unfortunate things is it, 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 it push it, it's going to push a group of people to be like, okay, how does this never happen again? Um, especially if, the, if carbon fiber is going to be something that's explored to like make these kind of, you know, adventurous trips down there to the Titanic, like possible. And it's like, what, what new innovations in terms of material mm. science are going to come about? Right. Because people really took this serious. And so, yeah, like I, 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 I it, it, it sucks that people's lives are lost, but I feel like I'm actually really curious to see like what, what this inspires in people, um, given the amount of coverage that it kind of had. For sure. Well, I think it opens up questions about other types of exploration that a lot of people can heart, can, can really can't see right now. For example, like, just like, uh, uh, maybe not full blown space travel, but being able to go much higher than planes. Uh, and some people would argue that they would like to be able to, you know, um, if they have the money, maybe pay a hundred thousand dollars to fly around, you know, I would do that. space. Bro. Uh, Hell no, bro. I, I, Hell I, I, no, I bro. What? I would do that, bro. Yeah. And, that. and you know what? And, and, you know, I hope you make it back safely. For Wait, so would you go like, to the moon? Uh, would you, you go know, to the moon? Not cause... Would you leave earth? That's that. I... Bro, if you're going to go to the edge, why not go all the way? What's the, what's the point in going to the edge if you ain't going to go all the way? <laughs> because that's a few days. That's a few days. I I just planes are really minutes. high up. Planes are really high up. It's it's you gotta planes are high. I ain't gonna lie. Like plane the plane commercial yeah. planes are high up. I don't even know how I get on one of those. Those are high up. Like any any wrong twist, you know how that go. Uh but uh hopefully exploration, uh hopefully this does inspire like more safety um around exploration and it, but it does highlight look, okay, nothing wrong with wanting the experience, but understand before you sign that waiver. Cause I actually saw uh, before I got up here. I saw a tweet from I think Mr. B saying that um, uh, uh, he had got an invite to to this, and he's like crazy for him to like think that he he had turned it. Hold down, on, to go on could. a submersible? Wow, yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. And I can see yeah. him. I can see him doing it too. Yeah, like, and, I mean, and, that seemed like a good so, video, like a great video that he would do. With people, too. people would love it. Oh, people would love it. But amazing damn, video. that's crazy. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, one real quick, another speaking of crazy, one small, well, I don't, I guess it depends on who you are asking if it's small or not, but, uh, so we've been seeing a lot of, uh, things happening with robotics and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. different bots and, but there's this robot dog and I had seen a robot dog before. Like they have like these new dogs that kind of, I saw one in, uh, like the NYPD had one. You know, um, LA actually just got one, I think, uh, earlier this month. Um, they're two hundred fifty thousand dollars, at least the ones that like the, the police have. You know, um, they kind of like have the technology, lasers and stuff like that. They can follow people. Um, but th there's this new one that came out and it's called Thermon Terminator. Terminator. And it's a uh, and it's been going it's like going it's been going viral on social media because it's a robot dog with a flamethrower on the top of it. Like and this dog is like twenty five hundred. It's not like it's not like mm. extremely expensive. It's like twenty five hundred. But I just like what do y'all like? What's going on here? So is that how we get people interested in each? Because I saw the robot dog itself. I was like, oh cool, they can follow you. They can you know they can do all these kind of basics still, but like mm. you know newer things. But like the flamethrower is what makes people yeah. pay attention to it. Is that what do you guys think? I know is people people are asking Congress to regulate AI. They need to be talking about these robots. Like that's a whole different that's a whole different right. level of uh, of just human interaction. Cause that's right. you don't have people having these things just out out in the wild. You know what I'm saying? Like imagine you're at the park with yes. your family and you, you see a robotic yes. dog sprinting across yeah, sprinting Throwing across dog. the grass or something. Like, <laughs> like, like any one of us would jump up and be like, Hold on, what's going on here? I don't I don't know, man. Honestly, yeah. that that technology yeah. just seems a little crazy yeah. to me to have in everybody's hands right now. Uh, cause it seemed like you can go wrong, wrong in so many yeah. ways, but I, I don't know. I don't know much about it. Yeah. So I guess this, I don't know what the, go ahead. 
No, nah, I was going to say, so this is the interesting thing about like a lot of these different kind of robot products, rather, rather if it's like the, the flamethrower or even the ones that the cops have, is um, they're all built using the same robot. Like it's coming, it's, it's yeah. literally the spot yes. robot dog from, uh, from yes. Boston Dynamics, right? And yeah. I think, I think yeah. that's just d demonstrating that Boston Dynamics is setting itself up to be a robotics platform. Right. Hmm, yes. and, and so it becomes tricky so. on like who, wh where, where, where do you manage the risk? Is that on who, you know, the customers Boston Dynamic is selling these robots to, or is it, you know, similar to what they're kind of advocating for with AI? Like, okay, if you're someone that wants to build on top of these platforms, you kind of almost have to have a, like a license. Right. Um, and I think, I think it's very, I think it's very tricky, but like, the, one of the questions I've been thinking about too is like, where do we even, where where are humans even okay with robots taking over different responsibilities, right? And um, I think I, I I can definitely see anything tied to like security and defense kind of being like yes. those early use cases because uh, yeah. even oh, how they for sure. like, bro, these these like I was doing some research this past week like. One of the one of the recent uh, things that they rolled out this week, um, it was from a group of uh, Meta uh, Meta AI engineers and Georgia Tech. They they basically uh, plugged in uh, one of these large language models, GPT four, into one of these dogs, and basically now you can talk to it and give commands. And what, what, what was <laughs> dope awesome. about what was dope about this is without the LLM, it only has like four basic commands, like similar to you talking, talking to your hmm. own kind of like real dog, you know what I mean? Yeah. But where this yeah. takes it to a whole different level. And so now imagine that not people now being able to talk to these robots, you got a flamethrower or a laser Man. on top of it. All you it. do is tell it to get, in, it, get into character, take on the role of robo, uh, robo yeah. dog and just get into character and just take on the yeah, morph yeah. into its own yeah. thing. That's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Oh right, characters. Yeah, play play characters. Yeah, that characters could be. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, when you put it like that, like characters could be like how how, how it is uh, behaves in any given. You know, uh, it could be like a public one. It could be like a park one. So, you know, uh, it could be so many different. Uh, so, but yeah, no. That, that, that MIT great. one that you were just talking about, Brown. So, what was their use case for? Is that just like for research purposes, or are they like testing it out with like with military? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. So it was, it was, uh, it was just uh, basically they were just demonstrating that mm. uh, robotics and AI had reached a point to where they can start to merge, and so that was like one of one of the first demonstrations of like specifically doing with like the Boston mm. Dynamic type of robots. But uh, I'm sure y'all saw the big body robot that they have as well that does oh, the yeah, backflips and all that. Imagine that bro, damn so thing happening. Imagine you get pulled yeah. over. Imagine you get pulled yeah. over by like a Tesla that's self driving, and one of those things get out, and it's it's, it's a cop. Like ima imagine like a police <laughs> forces just start like just automating the whole police force. Like, bro, I mean, honestly, you could have a whole robotic police force in the future. Yeah, for especially for some of these smaller towns. But but I, I why not? I, I think that's one of their goals. I think that's one of their goals, though. I think that's one of their goals because because when like Brian said, like the plat for this platform yeah. play that was awesome dynamics because. Um, I saw because once I saw New York have it, and then also like mm -hmm. with LA, they apparently they got it for free. They like they gifted it to them. It's two hundred. They made sure they let it like in the articles. Like it's two hundred fifty thousand for this specific yeah, robot. They gave them, but but yeah. they gave it to them for free. And so that lets me mm -hmm. know what they're doing. They're like, oh okay, like I'm not even gonna try to convince you. Just take this. Just take this. New York already got it, yep. and that's easy, you know. And they but approved it. City council approved it, by the way. LA City Council. You know what? You know what is interesting about this is like, uh, if you remember um, a few episodes ago when we were talking about what was the fertile ground for AI, we talk about we talked mm -hmm. about like this inverted pyramid where it was going to be like you know potentially these economies where people are a little bit older and the younger generations aren't there to replace them. When I think about yeah. a city like you know here in Chicago, Chicago's uh, police force is highly mm. understaffed, right? which obviously contributes yeah. to, you know, a lot of the crime and stuff that is going around in the city. But Chicago is not the only city across America or across the world that is like that. hundred percent. Right. And so, yeah. yeah. And the thing, and the thing that uh, I actually saw this graphic that was very intriguing um, where it talked about like the three, the three main areas robotics is going after is physical labor, uh, consumer households, and then uh, like space. Right. But on, on that graph, what it had was it was like when it comes to like, 
you know, physical labor and kind of like uh, routine kind of jobs, those are those are easier use cases to build because it's le it's less it's 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 less uh, variability. But um, it, re it usually requires like more sturdier kind of like structures or, you know, more, more like sophisticated kind of like robots. And when you think about something like pulling somebody like doing doing a job of a of, a, of an officer, I feel like it probably falls somewhere kind of like in the middle. But a lot of those root like I could see these things being, you know, deployed for routine routine. They, they call it that yeah. routine traffic yeah. stuff. You know what well, I mean? So they're intimidating. To me, that's intimidating. It's intimidating to think that, that that you could might be able to go outside in the future and then just see robot dog. Like, yeah. what? Because it's just like, if you do something wrong, is it like, what does it do to you? Now, what comes next? Does it come up to you and tell you something, or yeah. like start speaking to you in English? Like, what? I don't know. Like, what what happens? Is, and obviously, they gotta protect it, them because you gotta respect it. Is that is that fear a net positive? For society or a net negative it can for society, be. It I think be. it's a, I think it's a negative. It I think be. it's a negative, it and, and be, I think but... that fear could potentially push it out of society, because the reality is, if people don't want that in the communities, mm. it's not going to be there in the communities. Like the police, the the police, sure. you know, municipalities can go ahead and they can start rolling these things out, but when these suburban mothers start going to the city council, like nah, like you can't have these things. Like then that 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 changes it, that reverses it, and so. I think it I think the way that it's rolled out to society has to be in such a way where people can start getting used to it. But I think if you if you go from zero to one hundred, like if you if people just yeah. immediately just start seeing them pulling people oh, over, yeah. and I think that that's just too much. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think there has to be like a a way in which it, it gets introduced to society um so that you don't just have that that big pushback. Cause I think if you do have that pushback, it's not good for anybody. It's not good for the the innovation that's happening. Cause that's all we we all agree, like it's some serious innovation that that has needed to happen in order for these robots to even be at the point that they are today. Like Boston Dynamics has been working on this problem for a very long time. Um and the eighties. Yeah, and there's 80s. so many things from hardware, software that needed to go to happen in one material science. It's just so many things that needed to happen material for them to science, get to yeah. where they are. And so you know, if if the public, you know, just raise, you know, pulls the alarm too much, and I think it kind of dilutes all that work that's being done. Which I, we, you know, as as a you know a, a person interested in that technology, I certainly wouldn't want that to happen. Let me throw out this yeah, ethical no, question. So you know, like how say say for example, there's 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 some situation. Let's say. Um, Unfortunately, an officer or a police like dog mm. ends up getting killed. Like, you know, that person would be charged with killing an officer, even if they yep. killed the dog, right? If somebody killed a robot, like shot down a robot, you're getting charged. You're getting charged, but not maybe not to the same level, yeah. but you're getting charged. It has feelings. It charged. has feelings, bro. That's without a doubt. What? <laughs> <laughs> you're getting you know, charged. <laughs> Well, well, at the very at the very least, it's the property of, yeah. of the of the, yeah, that's what of the city government, and they're, so they're so like at the very least, so they're gonna it's it's yeah. there's no way you're getting away with that. Uh, they're gonna put camera, they're gonna put everything in there to make sure that you know. Uh, but to Dre's point, though, we sh it should be a while before they start doing anything close to that. Uh, hopefully, like because uh, we would hate to see like static, and, but we already do see that with the city council. I dropped a, a link. Uh, there's a little, there's already a little static with it because even though it's free, mm -hmm. people still are like it's controversial. So uh, I think yeah. uh, Dre's point about city council is is, is valid there because it's already that's happening now. Um, so um, and people are starting to see that seed, and I can see what Boston Dynamics is doing too with that. Um, but yeah, Dre, yeah, I think you said you had uh, a thought yeah. highlight or some. Uh, Really I found story. this to be pretty interesting, and um, yeah, we we all obviously talk a lot about businesses and startups, and you know all different types of a spectrum of businesses. But I think these solo solo businesses are are pretty interesting. So there's a solo solo run software company that's been around for quite a long time that I had not heard about, um, and they just recently did an acquisition, um, and it was pretty interesting. So I want to talk about it. So first off, are y'all familiar with League of Legends? It's a popular popular video game. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, League's yeah, been around yeah. for a very long time. Like, I think it's probably one of the that plus Call of Duty is probably one of the, the oldest, most relevant games that's still actually around. That people are like, it still has a massive audience. Like, it's a lot of obviously a lot of older games, but right now I think League has like a hundred, almost two hundred million global players, uh, almost thirty million in the U.S. Could be more than that. 
Um, and they've generated over $2 billion in revenue for developers. So they're a really big platform. Um, and there's a big developer ecosystem that they've built up over time. Um, and last year, I didn't even notice, but during my research on this, last year they did a show at Netflix um, that ended up being like a really, uh, a really popular show uh, for Netflix. So it seemed like they're starting to branch out from just video game content and actually doing movies, which is pretty interesting. But nevertheless, in, in 2013, this guy named Gene Nicholas, he was a programmer since the age of 11. So he started coding when he was really young, similar to you, actually, Rodney. So you might find some pleasure in his story. Um, he started building apps for games um, and just started, you know, building little little uh, little bots, little apps or whatever that kind of little, little companion apps for different online games and just really uh, embedding himself in the gaming community. Uh, and uh, in, in 2013, he launched an app for League of Legends. I think it was called Graphs. And ended up blowing up, ended up getting like 17 million visits. Um, and it was a website where people could go to and get like stats around like the different characters in the game um, and then get like different game uh, monthly updates. So it's kind of like a, a community, I'll say like a community form or community newsletter in a sense. But nevertheless, like it had like some really big enthusiasts um, in the League of Legends community. And so in the early days, like when, when Gene launched that, he saw how big it was becoming. He spent a lot of his time talking to the community, meeting with, meeting with different players, and really trying to figure out, okay, well, I really like this. How can we make this even bigger? What else can we do? Um, and in, to, in 2017, that like you know customer-centric mindset kind of paid off because he ended up launching a second product, which was called The Professor. And this was a free application that was essentially an overlay over the game. So the way League is, most people play League on a, on a computer, um, and so obviously you can have overlay or other applications kind of playing or running in the background while you're playing a game, which is pretty cool if you're playing a game. So it gives you like a bunch of live in-depth scouting information about your opponents. So you can kind of figure out like which your opponents are doing in real time. So you can imagine like the competitive advantage to that. It gives you some post-game analytics so you can kind of see how you're performing, guides you through how to take advantage of different characters in the game. So if you're new to playing, it can kind of guide you and help you kind of ramp up because League is a pretty complex uh, game to kind of get involved get involved in um and so the game the that that the application just instantly took off um and in 20 in 2022 the, the app was doing about 13 million dollars in revenue and it had about a million daily active users um and it actually just sold for 50 plus million dollars and uh gene nicholas again the founder of the company was the only employee uh, all the development work he was able to do himself, but he also con contracted it out wow. to subcontractors. But literally, he was a solo f solo employee, solo founder since the beginning. And again, the business was doing thirteen million a year, um, and he just sold it for fifty plus million. The company that actually bought it is pretty interesting too. Uh, it's called Moba Network, and they're a pretty big company. They have about a half a billion dollar val uh, valuation. They're pretty big. Um, they have 170 million people um, kind of interacting with their with their different tools that they've been able to acquire. So they're a pretty big company. Um, and yeah, they essentially acquired his acquired his business as a solo founder. And I thought it was just pretty remarkable. Like, again, he started out as 11. And I'm sure when he started out, similarly to, to your story, Ronnie, like, he probably didn't imagine, like, where that would take him. You know, he just saw a kid probably just had an interest in it and just like, sure. hey, I'm just going to lean into this interest. And that interest ended up, you know... Um, leading him sure. to a, a road of success. But it's not often that we hear about these types of acquisitions where you have zero investment funding. So he owned 100% of the company and he was the solo employee and you already making millions a year. It was already profitable day one. So I just thought that was an incredible business story that we definitely should highlight. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, congrats to that guy, uh, Gene. Uh, that's That's incredible. Um, and yeah, I could definitely, uh, relate. And one thing I can say for sure, um, is that like, uh, these gaming communities are very, they have so much engagement, so much, like Dre said, they're competitive. There's, there's, uh, there's a whole communities around them. And so if you could offer anything, uh, to these communities, um, and, uh, people are willing to pay for, uh, and, uh, I guess this is, this is an example of somebody that, you know, uh, yeah, they just were already the right place, right time, had the right interest, and uh, um, and it's incredible for them to be able to do it as a one person uh, from a like from a team standpoint. Because that's definitely different than what we uh, mostly see over here um, in this venture back startup game, uh, which is uh, entirely different. Uh, and but I have been seeing some interesting um, perspectives lately with the advent of uh, or 
more so the acceleration of a AI, people suggesting that we'll see more of these type of founders. So uh, we'll see, I guess, but that's, that's dope. That's an incredible story. Yeah. Like even what's coming to my mind is I'm like, bruh, how did you operationalize <laughs> that? Right. Just because we feel most people feel like if you to hit those type of revenue metrics consistently, like it takes a large team. I, I, I and, and I feel like it's 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 almost one of those um, like biases that get get gets people in trouble mm -hmm. when they're fundraising because uh, and and Rodney you 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 spoken about this too where your your, your investors kind of have urged you to you know make certain hiring mm -hmm. decisions yeah hundred percent yeah hundred percent you know yeah. what I mean like people yeah. equate usually equate growth to just hiring yeah. more people but like here's a demonstration of like. He, he 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 found his niche and he was able to build a really good business um and so that no nah, that's inspiring yeah, to say the it, least. yeah it, it is it is really it really yeah. it is really inspiring and i think it, yeah it definitely uh the thing that resonated with me is that he took his time you know what i'm saying like even even in the midst of the growth he could have yeah. easily like over leveraged the business he was like all right let's let's like scale this up and honestly he probably could have got you know took some good money off the table had he went out and sought like external funding and maybe he'd be in the same position but I think the other thing yeah. is like just not having to deal with the stress, <laughs> like the stress of investors over his head or the stress of like worrying about all the different outcomes. Yeah. It's like the way he probably approached the business is like he was already making millions of dollars a year. So, you know, success was already had already been hit. Yeah. Yeah. So let me let me, yeah, let me I, ask I, once this I, question. Because something something I'm something I've been curious about is like when you're when you're when you're building a business and playing a game where you are more like you're basically taking that approach i'm gonna i'm gonna take my time versus like the opposite of that is if you go raise vc the whole thing is about growth mm -hmm. as fast as possible right and the pressure pressures that come with that how does that change how you think of competition you know what i mean because in a bit in a, in, a, in a business where like i have to grow as fast as possible I'm probably worried about somebody else getting there as fast, like as fast as possible. There's a point I like need a to race, get to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And somebody may beat me there. Versus if I'm just doing this and like taking my time, looking to build something, you know, solid and 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 and, and steady. Are you are you really worrying about that as much? And so I'm just kind of curious, based off what game you're playing, how 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 should you be thinking about like competition? What's interesting is that um, I'm not saying this is this guy's case. I can't speak to this guy's case, but uh, uh, what's interesting is that is that the the ignorance of, for example, venture capital and startups sometimes can pay off for people. Not saying this guy didn't know about uh, venture capital or, or or the world of early stage startups and like multi billion dollar companies. I'm not saying he didn't know about that at all. Uh, but what I am saying is is that is that um, if you are say you know um, you, you, you're a gamer and you stumble upon something, you build something for a community and it just hits, right? You have profit, right? You may like, that might just be a, that's just like a whole lane around that. And, and I started to say that that might benefit you by not even knowing, having deep knowledge about VC, because you're not even playing that game. You're not even thinking about that game, you know? Um, but it's possible that he, you know, uh, when he got a certain size that he started to see more of that stuff. And at a certain point, he probably was like, okay, I probably can't take money. But I wonder at what point was that? Did he start to see all those other avenues? Because uh, if his first, and I guess I don't know his full background, but but if his first, like, uh, at least for me, uh, my first entrepreneurial stuff was like shoveling snow and gathering friends around for like picking up leaves and stuff, basic stuff. And then before I knew it, I had been making some stuff for games that people were just buying it. And I was trying to do business and I remember trying like having business things I was thinking of, but I had no idea what a startup was. Um, didn't even occur to me that I was working in a startup, barely even occurred to me that I was even an engineer. And there were certain ways I was approaching it where um, had, for example, in our case, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually interested in the story you told, Drake, because I'm like, man, that sounds almost illegal based on the shit, the, the shit that we went through um, uh, over a decade ago because we had built this like um, well, this guy had built this platform where it, it would overlay on the game, 
um, and it'll give people all these. Uh, I guess it was doing it for them. So maybe this is not doing it for you. It's yeah. just giving you that. It was like, just giving you the, the information. It wasn't. A, maybe it wasn't automated. Maybe game, from from my understanding, I got you. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Maybe that's where the difference was because because uh, we did the same thing, but the difference was we was actually like doing doing the stuff for you. So maybe like you can, you know, like there was a court case. It was like that's a league. You you can't. You can do that, but you can't sell it. Basically, is what they told mm. the company, and that's. But but, but I, I the point I was trying to make though is that I wonder, you know, um, is it easier to think about some of this stuff when you're not like thinking through the lens of a startup? And maybe um, was it that like by the time you got exposed to the avenue of venture capital or venture funding or these bigger other ways of doing it, he was already doing it a certain way that was working, and he just kept going that way. Why stop? You know. Um, but I don't know all the information, so. Um, but I can see somebody that has a different, who's just running, a, just, I guess, falling into this, you know, opportunity and just keep going, you know, and they just do what they have to do. And they're not thinking that, oh, I could just go raise $500,000 to, you know, and, and by the time they are thinking that they already are making a million dollars a year or something. And at that point, it don't make, it doesn't make sense. Um, so um, I guess it doesn't make sense depending on how you look at it. Because somebody would argue, I know there's somebody that would argue, oh, well, well, even though he got $50 million, maybe that he could have took that to another level. But um, to Dre's point, so this is a big win for one for one individual to, to get yeah. like. Shit, if, you know, if you know, he had know. taken some money in order for him to have seen a $50 million exit, he would have had to sell it for a lot more. And that's and that's really the difference there. Yeah. Is like, and I, I think like founders should think about like, what is a what is a what does a successful exit look like, right? Because that can come in many shapes and forms. But you know, again, like taking on the moment he take on that VC, like I think the road to get to that fifty million exit for him personally would have just been much longer, uh, because the the type of business the type of, of business course. that he would have had to have built, um, it's just this is fundamentally different. And so yeah, I, I always like exploring these different businesses that are able to be built um, in a in a more traditional way right because vc is relatively like is a yeah, newer sure. funding source in the world of business i mean people have been doing business for hundreds of years and obviously didn't have a concept of vc so for sure um yeah yeah very fascinating very fascinating outcome. exactly so, so 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 let me ask this question when should when should you take vc and when should you not any any recommendations it all depends on what you want it all depends on what what you're optimizing for like what type of exit do you want what type of business do you want what type of lifestyle do you want because you have to think about all of that there's a lot i don't think there's like a a one silver like one silver thing but i think all those all those things added up have to be have to be taken into account what should you not optimize for just raising money (laughs) <laughs> In way. don't optimize for that because that's not success to me i mean some people will argue differently like yeah it's yeah. successful but like if you plan the game of business and you are getting excited about your ability to take on debt i like i don't know like because i mean that's not the that's not the game right like that's part of the game right but that's not the game uh and so i think like yeah the, the thing yeah. to not do is to not think that you're playing one game but you're actually playing a different game Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I would definitely agree with that. That one. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of uh, raising money, though, uh, was that uh, IRL or that app, that social app? They, they, they recently. It was recently found out they had like eighty percent of those was bots on, on, and they rose. What is, was it? Three hundred million. They raised or two. Something crazy. Two hundred million. To what? Two. Two hundred million! Wow. <laughs> who and they? Who and led they the round? Most of the most of the accounts was who, by who, led the, who led the round? What? Uh, was it sixteen Z uh, or Sequoia? One of those let me see. had to be. Had to be. There's uh, no way you raised that much see. money. It ain't one of them. It, 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 no, it was. It was. It was. It was. Yeah, it was those. Yeah, 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 it gotta be one of those. It, let me see. Gotta be. Gotta be one of those. Let's go to Crunch Space. Space. By the way, who people don't know Crunch Space? It's just a, a database where you can see the investors. Okay, so Founders oh, Fund. Right. Oh, are you, are you serious? <laughs> that don't even seem like an investment they would make. That must have been That's a new crazy. partner. They probably go. Well, it seems like a strategy they might nah, take. That's a terrible. Well, you know what? 
Yeah. Father's Wind was later though. That was later though. Oh, they got. That was later though. That was later though. Who was the you know like what? earlier? Let me correct that. Because I see Founders Fund. Right now, I, Founders I, Fund did invest in Facebook. See. Let me let me correct that. Let me correct that. It's not like it's not as if Founders Fund doesn't do any First, social investments. They have invested in Facebook. They made a lot of money on that. So I, I, I see why they would wait a decade plus and then try to take another swing at it. I, I understand that. Because that's what in real life was. Wasn't like a social app. I don't yeah. even know what the app is. Like what what is it? Is it a social app? I think it was a social media app and I had saw people mostly in our industry, like kind of like saying little things about it, but I never saw, I never understood. Cause I didn't it was basically, see it, it, it was basically like just planning, um, the, uh, as the name, as the name said in, in real life. So it was, it was more, I would categorize it as like a scheduling app for friends and like family type thing. Hmm. Okay, so let me ask you this. So now I'm reading it more now. I see a little bit more information around this, right? So it was Floodgate and, uh, and Founders Fund, right? Uh, for, that did their seed round. Uh, $3 million. Uh, I, IRL is a group mes- uh, group messaging social social network that allows users to discover new groups, communities, and events. Um, they raised a total of, yeah, like you said, Brian, $2 million, and they went to a Series C. Um, now, what I'm wondering now is that sounds a little bit like reddit in a way like uh hmm. you know the community the uh the community aspect of it uh because being able to discover new groups and communities and events it sounds like reddit in some ways i'm sure it, what the interface wasn't like reddit in any way uh but the reason i'm bringing it up reddit was because reddit did this reddit did this hmm. now i'm not i don't know at what point they stopped doing this but you know reading uh, I think I think it was uh, Alexis Ohani and read, uh, wrote a book called "Without Their Permission." They originally had fake accounts because they needed people to, you know, engage with mm, it originally, I right? See, you know what I'm what saying? saying, right? Like so, like, and I'm not saying that what IRL did is right. Is right. But what I am saying is, at what point did Reddit stop using that strategy? And is it just that they got away with it because it worked, or is it like now? I granted. IRL, it does seem like that like you shouldn't be at Series C, I guess, with mo- with your majority of your user base being fake. That doesn't make any sense. But I do wonder, like, are people saying that this strategy is not uh, acceptable? Because we do see it in some of the products we love right now, you know, in which case they were doing those different ways of getting started. You know, so I, I guess I posed that question to you guys. Like, is it? No, nah, this seems this people, seems different. This seem, this this seemed like seeing? they misrepresent. Yeah, this seemed like Straight they fraud. misrepresented those bots as actual users to investors. That's not what Reddit. I don't think that's what Reddit did. You know what I I'm see. saying? Like, I don't think yeah. they like yeah. said, "Hey, we got 10 million users, but yeah. they're all bots." I think Reddit was like clear. Like, we only got 100 thousand users or whatever it was, and we're trying to use these bots to like generate mm-hmm. user engagement mm-hmm. versus like actually counting them. Mm-hmm. So th- this mm-hmm. this in particular looks like. Oh yeah, that's important. Yeah, yeah. Th- I think that's yeah. the like yeah. distinction. It's like there, yeah. Reddit was using it as like a user activation tactic, right? It seemed like this this company is using it yes. as like literally a way to defraud like investors, and it worked. Shit, my man's manufactured engagement and in, in usage of a of a of a product. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what that's exactly what it seemed like. Yeah. Same situation that we talked about in a couple episodes ago, like with um, Frank. Uh, that uh, yeah. financial app yeah, by yeah, yeah. by the by the, uh, the young lady oh, that right, sold right. her company to Chase. Yeah, yeah. Um, similar, some pretty pretty similar yeah, thing. But this seems that, yeah. way more sophisticated. It seems yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Well, well, the thing about her is though is like it was clear cut fraud. Actually, I guess it's not clear cut fraud. Uh, let me pull that back. Let me rewind that back. Um, uh, do you think though that this founder is? What is he saying? I wonder if he's saying anything because do you think that he might be saying like, well, we thought that like, we'll just, it was, it was gonna, it was gonna, like, we just needed a little bit more. Like, what do you, do you think he, or do you think he, or that's just a cop out. He just, he would just like, what do you think about that? Or maybe it's a woman. I don't know who the founder is actually. I shouldn't assume, but um, like, I think it's fraud. Cause like at series C, I mean, I think, and I think even the number might have been as high as 90%. So I mean, that's ninety percent fake. Ninety percent fake users. You can't do that. You can't do that. It was oh high. God. It was high. It was high. Wait, was, how many users? How many users did they say they uh, had? What? Like, like a hundred million, fifty million, ninety-five percent. No, I can't. No, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I just reacted. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's the number I saw. 95. I see yeah. 95% on here. I see 95% fortune. Okay. I mean, we'll just put the source. Fortune says 95%. Bro, the company That's was valued. The company now, was, was valued like at ten percent, twenty. It was valued at one point two billion. They claimed that they had twenty million monthly active users. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. That's terrible. Did, did, <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> did it say how they? Do they like, at any point? At any point, did they start off with good intentions? Wait, what, did, what did you say, Brian? Hey. No, I was, how how did this information come about anyway? Were they raising another round? Were they going through acquisitions? Yeah, so it says, like, I'm reading this. So I have this article from the information, and it says, in the first half of the year, employees begin raising concerns about the accuracy of the founder's claims. The IRL app had 20 million monthly active users. It always be internally. We've all been employees at companies, and we all know that our CEOs have said some shit externally. Yeah. And then we'd be internally, we'd be scratching our heads like, what, what you say? Of course, yeah. <laughs> we all been there. Yeah, we've the all plan? been yeah, there. The so plan? that's what it's, yeah, that's yeah, what it seems plan? like. And then it says later that year, the Securities and Exchange Commission began investigating whether IRL had violated security laws. Uh, so it looks like employees started, that's really the tipping point. Employees started raising concerns. The SEC got tipped off, launched an investigation. And then uh, it looks like after there, a former employee came out, so kind of like a whistleblower, and that just kind of tipped everything. So that's what it was. It looked like SoftBank invested in them as well, by the way. So, yeah, th this is not like uh, some low-level yeah. investors. These were sophisticated investors. <laughs> what 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 does this say about it means nothing? That's what it means. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean investors don't do diligence like that. That's one thing that I think a lot of founders. If you haven't raised money, you may not you may not know this. Investors don't do as much diligence. Like the due down, the process seems like. Let's say your early stage founder has never raised money before. Due diligence, it sounds like okay. They're going to go through our records. They're going to go through this. They're going to go through that. And that's actually not what happens. They don't like a lot of times. Um, uh, for one reason or the other, there's a lot of just, just one. There's just a lot of trust, which which I do believe there should be trust in business. Uh, but I do think that some like they, they sometimes they miss the verification part. Um, and going a step further, especially if there's other names on it, you know, like, for example, in this case, these guys got Founders Fund, you know, and Floodgate. Yeah. People are doing less because of that. Now, if you're the founder that nobody knows you, I best believe that dude, like, best believe there mm -hmm. will be due diligence. Like, if no, like, but in a case where you have reputable uh, funds and whatnot, you know, um, and I guess, yeah, I guess, to be honest, I guess does pose the question of, you know, are these guys a little bit responsible to some extent? Uh, because these guys, um, kind of like, for example, um, we go to certain news anchors, even though we didn't, they didn't sign up for this, but we go to certain news sources with the trust that, okay, if these news sources are putting this out, then this is, has more credibility. And some of these investors, they have that influence. And I think Founders Fund, they have that influence. You get a check from Founders Fund, it would not shock me that, you know, Sequoia or any of these other guys, when the due diligence comes along, they might do just not they might not look that much into it you say you have this many users this much capital in the bank they might be like all right cool um so i think it also is case by case too it's case mm -hmm. by case um and i think this founder probably was testing all different types of things but i want to say something to founders like advice to founders you know um there like would there's something i said earlier and it's user activation like there's a case of fraud and there's a case of like trying to get started off the ground and which is a way different. And I think founders need to understand that. And also we were talking about the way you represent your company. Um, there's a way where you're actually misleading, you're purposely misleading. Um, and there's a way where, hey, look, we have a user base, right? And we understand that initially we have to seed it or we have to create some engagement. Um, and, but you can't, this idea of, because when I see that 95%, I just say, so at what point did they think that this was going to all come crashing down? You know, like at some point you have to think that like you're going to need to, you know, and so I guess in these cases it's clear, but some founders, I can see some founders reading like the Reddit story and taking it the wrong way. Not saying it would lead to the IRL thing, but but I can see some founders looking at that story and reading it the wrong way. But I think it's more so like, hey, look, sometimes you have like the Airbnb stories where, you know, they take things off Craigslist, like they took some things off Craigslist and they, but some people didn't like that. Now, granted, we, I love the story. 
but some people didn't like the fact that Airbnb took, like in the early days, took some of the listings and put it on because they were like, well, we didn't ask you to do that. So there are a lot of like stickiness, but I think the misleading part and not being uh, honest, and this case is, I guess this is, this is not one of those cases where somebody got a little too carried away. I think this is one of those cases where it's like straight fraud, just 95%. Like, so that's one, just, of, the, that's so one of the employees, you know, um, one of the employees that actually it. raised a flag about this was fired from the company. So, I mean, <laughs> that, that, that lets you write, we all, we, we all know what that means, like, when, when that happens. Um, so yeah, I, I think you, you touched on it properly, Rodney. But, but this is the thing too, is like one, I don't think, I don't think the current environment of venture um, incentivizes bad actors not to do something like that. I, I, I almost feel like the current um, fundraising environment incentivizes people to do stuff like this founder did because many founders are in a place of survival. This is just white yeah, collar survival, right? And yeah. if we think about survival, given where we come from, you, niggas is robbing people, doing all types of crazies yeah. just to stay alive. This is equivalent yeah. to that. Like they probably need, mm-hmm. like probably needed capital or what, what whatever. Yeah, they, you know, just basically yeah. stay alive. Yeah. Well, that's why. Well, that's why. For example, when you see like you know, if you like watch the All In podcast long enough, you see other people who are or just people who have been in this game long enough. They try not to come down on founders because they're they understand that there are there there are things that founders do, and so especially you know you have ten you say you have hundred employees, et cetera, et cetera, and nobody's saying hey you get a pass for doing X, Y, and Z. But I do see where people try to empathize with founders for you know and you know, um, but but this is a case where it's a this just reminds me a lot of the media where the media is incentivized to get something to to market first, so they're all scrambling. So even if the story is not real, they might pick it up because they're like, we got to compete with all these other people. We don't pick it up in time. Everybody else, and in this case, for example, what people don't understand about this case is that IRL actually, you know, by by doing this, they did take away a lot of opportunities. I I know that some people believe. And and I don't know what everybody believes because not everybody has the same take. But some people believe that the venture capital game is um, is a uh, is not zero sum. Um, and the thing is, is that I would like it not to be zero sum. And I think I can see some of that perspective. But I do think that founders are competing for capital. So in this case, for example, where you have IRL and they're doing this huge thing and they're competing and there's and you can't compete with a company that has 95% fake users. So for example, you might, there could be these founders that have, you know, social apps that are doing well and they they need funding. They're, they're competing, they're doing it the right way. They're telling, or they're coming to the table with their real metrics, their real numbers, their real team. And um, they had great, like, and an investor, unknowingly, not to their fault, they might be like, so how are you gonna compete with IRO? <laughs> Not knowing that you're not even competing yeah, yeah. with, them. you're not even competing mm. with them. Like that's your like that's a they you're only competing with them in the mm. in the venture game. In the real life, you can't mm. in real life they never were competing. You see what I'm saying? So so and that's like hard for people to grasp. What is going on in regards to companies being invested in and what like to Dre's, Dre and and Brian's point earlier about like value value and. There was actually no competition, but an investor could easily sit on that and use that as a reason to not pa- to invest in your company, mm. you know, um, and not get commissioning around your company or be intimidated by it, you know. And there was never anything behind that company. All smoke is a mirror, but it doesn't mean so. Yeah. It so it hurts the whole eco. It, it, it hurts the whole ecosystem. Not good. Actually. And the way you broke that down was like yes, very yes. very clear when yeah. you when you said it in that way. I literally can picture an investor probably on a call talking to a founder like we are. It was like, so wh- how are you going to compete against this? Yes. And, and the founders, yes. they was ready to answer it and everything. And in that, all actuality, like you said, they're not even, they're not even really competing. Damn. I, we know, we all know that happened for sure. And for sure. And no, of course. Of course. Of course. And mm. the thing, no, it's worse. No, it's terrible about it too. That founder will also be looked at as not credible. They'll be yeah. silenced. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like that founder, yeah. that investor, and and both parties are not wrong. I don't think the investor in that case, you know, um, is thinking. They're not thinking. They're thinking, okay, yeah, this floodgate and all these. Like, you know, I see all these people using it. You know, like, and it's just a mirage. 
But and so they're coming to that with false. Both sides are coming to it. And but here's the thing, like that founder will have to. That's why founders have to understand when you come to these meetings, you have to be confident in what you know and what you know to be true um, and 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 stand on that. And sometimes you don't need to. Ar- and also, you don't always need to argue either, because sometimes like and, and 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 also you need to take. Try try to play the value game, I guess, but. That that's hard though. It affects the whole ecosystem in that way because you know that there are people sitting on the other side that were saying like, "Look, I have all this. I have all you like. You don't see like all like, and it's like, well, why compete? Because this is exactly like IRL. Why would why, why would you do that? And it's like, okay, all right, you know. And it's like you can't. You how do you say how? What can you really say to that without looking like you are dismissing their concerns or dismissing that company or? Or not being serious, like some, because they might think, "Oh, this this part is not being serious," you know. What so, do you think it, what, um, what 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 do you think the conversation is on the LP side of things? Because mm. <laughs> that's, that's money that's question. been thrown away. It probably depends on the fund, honestly. Because uh, let's be honest, if you're an LP in a Sequoia fund, or wait, wait, who who investing in this? What do we say? Let me let me get specific. I don't want to just. I don't want to pull. You said founder. Uh, Floodgate. Yeah, Floodgate okay. and Founders Fund. Let's go Founders Fund. Founders Let's fund, fund, fund. If you're an LP. If you're an LP in like yeah. Founders Fund, Andreessen, <laughs> Sequoia, one of these top tier funds, you probably have are sitting well on the decades of incredible returns that you've been given. And so I think those LPs, like they're, they're – questioning is probably a little bit less because it's like shit okay look we, we already we already done we already done ate a bunch anyway you know what i'm saying like you're gonna have some bad bets but i think if you're an lp of a of a smaller fund or a fund that is less less known you you know you haven't been doing this you know more than eight years you can get away with that not yeah, you you just some questioning that. probably not right because yeah. i think that's a little bit different but again if you're in Dreesen, if I'm yeah. if I'm over at Andreessen, I better not get a call from the LP. Like, what you calling me for? Like, come on. Like, we just we just took five companies public yeah. last year and got you off five yeah. billion. What you talking about? Like, don't call me about this shit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? I, I would imagine yeah. that's probably how it is, but that's my yeah. that's my assumption. Does this hurt potentially hurt like investor like wh- whoever whoever was that specific decision maker for that specific firm? Does that potentially hurt their credibility? I mean, to some extent, but not, I feel like it doesn't, I feel like nobody really gets held accountable that much other than like, mm-hmm. cause there's like, like, I don't think so. I, I really think, and also too, who knows if that partner is still there. A lot of times by the time this stuff gets, comes out, like that partner be like, there'll be a partner at a whole nother, maybe they'd be at another firm and they have started their own fund or something, or you, I don't know, like they could, it could, but I just don't, I think they just charge it to the game. You know, I think they just charge it to the game, but I could be wrong, but yeah. I think they just charge it to the game. Like, oh, look, hey, I didn't know. Like, I trusted. Like, I, I think I think it's not like everybody drills down on them. You got to worry about losing your job. Unless it was like you – unless it was like they could see how you were trying to be a player in it. You're a player in the fraud, like, especially knowing. But if you were just uh, uh, got caught up in the heist, I feel like most investors have made that mistake. So they, they won't come down on, on somebody that, that like – yeah, I don't think that. I, I don't know. I just don't think that really hurts you. I mean, it might hurt your credibility to some extent, but you still have. You're still the. You're still a partner at Sequoia unless you get fired. So if you or and it wasn't Sequoia to be clear, it wasn't Sequoia. But the point is, is that like if you're at a big firm and this happens, you know, um, that one investment doesn't define your whole job because it's a portfolio. Of sure. Unless you invested in this, Theranos, and Frank. <laughs> if you didn't invest in all three of those companies, then then you gotta uh, look at your own track record and be yeah, like, I don't know yeah. if I'm good at this. Yeah, but. yeah. We should have a strike rule. We should have a strike rule. We should have a strike rule. If you keep if you keep getting fooled, then it's like, all right, then you know. Man. Uh, but uh, I don't know if the answer is like more due diligence because like uh, I don't know what that means. Because to be honest, I just think that like these people like it's this is a very difficult security and fraud. Like SEC has a hard job in this in this in this area because more due diligence does like I think. I, I think standard due diligence. Just don't ignore the standard due diligence. I don't think it's more. Man, just, just don't, companies don't companies that, that take on right. this amount of cap. I think there needs to be like a threshold, and then we can we can move on to one more topic or wrap it up if you want. But I think there needs to be like a threshold where sure. if you either raise a certain amount of capital or like revenues hit a certain amount, where like you got to do public disclosure. 
of like company like comp like company information needs to be yeah, like sure. publicly disclosed. I think Europe Europe has something similar to this. I don't I can't remember what the uh, the revenue threshold is, but there's there's some countries in Europe that have this where like if you're a company, even if you're a private company, I think it's like ten million in revenue or something like that. You have to like publicly disclose your books and file like public um public record like public record of your book similarly to how public companies uh, operate here in the US but again it's all across the board for even private companies so I, I feel like there probably needs to be like I, I feel like there needs to be something something like that for like for these companies that, that that take on all this money because the reality is some of these really big institutional funds like the founders funds like the Andreessen's like the Sequoias they're using public funds many times in their funds, right? They're raising money from these pension funds, from these public mm -hmm. endowments, from these churches, from, you know, the worker unions, right? These are people's retirements. These are, these are, I mean, even though, sure, from a, from a portfolio allocation standpoint, VC may only make up a small amount, but the reality is these are actually, this is real people's money. Um, and so I, I think there needs to be a level of accountability at a certain level um, within these within these uh, private companies um, that yeah we don't have here in the U.S. but I think it needs to be. What uh, this this is something I'm curious about is um, say for example if you want to work in investment banking or private wealth management or any of that you know like traditional f high 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 finance kind of roles one there's certain like certifications you have to get to kind of even you know be able to do that but then two you have the SEC who is kind of like the big brother, you know, watching, watching over that. You don't need no certification to work in venture. And you also don't have nobody kind of watching over them and, you know, making sure things are kind of going well. And, and, and the thing about it is venture is no different. It venture is just another buy side piece of mm -hmm. the finance puzzle in, 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 in a way. So it's very intriguing to see them like it, to me, it's similar to the, to, to the, to the whole ocean gate mm -hmm. Titan thing. Like, there's no agency looking right. over any of this, and part part of it, I, I like I I like it because you know obviously it spears like innovations and, and and things useful things in the world, but like to some extent, like you said, this is this is real people's money that are being lost based off of the fact that these systems are set up in ways where the incentives can lead to a lot of bad decisions, not only on the founder side of things, but also like on, 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 on the partner side of things as well. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very interested, um, to see how the asset class, uh, kind of changes over the next few years. Like even thinking about back to like what during the 2010s, you know, we, we, we started to see like, you know, uh, uh, what, what was it? It was, it was the 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 law that Obama signed in that led to like equity equity kind of like oh yeah 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 um, I forget the name um, so net neutrality yeah 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 yep. but but what's dope about that is like going back to what you said you gotta that it that is being reviewed by the SEC all that like you know now that you're selling to everyday people yep like are we going to see something yeah. like that over the next if more of these cases start to pop up and I, I feel like. This isn't the last time we'll hear about something on that kind of scale in the hundreds of millions, billions of yeah. dollars this year. Like, to be honest yeah, with you. I agree. I think the shocking part is like, it, it doesn't shock me when an early stage founder, it, it, it wouldn't shock me at all that any, some level, because this um, the ground level is full of early stage founders. It wouldn't shock me if they were trying to spin some narrative and try to get raise the money or play the game or what. That wouldn't shock me. It's, the, it's just the fact that they got this far. Like, like that's what's so shocking. It's like, it's like, cause you just don't think that that's even possible. Like, you don't even think that. Like, but, 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 yeah, but, you, but, yeah, I, like, Rocky, like, you, you yeah, know the game, bro. You know, you know. If I get, I do know the game, but I, but I never, I never try. I know the game, but here's the thing. I, me personally, I like. Here's the thing. Like, I don't want to do anything that makes me paranoid. And for me personally, yeah. you know, what I'm saying I know the game. However, there is. What there's also what I I know the game and I know how it works, but there's certain things that you can't just play the game that like you can't just play the game just for the sake of playing playing to win the venture game. Like there's there's reputation you got to care about. 
There is trust you got to care about. And there's also like integrity in your business. Because you want a long-term business, you can't just be – like, you can't just – yeah, I get it. You, but you it starts. It I always starts small, you know, though. It always starts small. Investor on a demo, you might. No, oh, right. No, it does. It does. It does. I get that. You know, but but I get it. For example, if there's a difference between, for example, you might show an investor a demo and pitch it as live, mm. but it's a recorded video. You have the code. You have the, the software. You know, what I'm saying you just didn't want to risk it being live, right? And one argue that's a little misleading, but, but you know the point I'm trying to make is that we do do things like that that people if they want to nitpick and could say is misleading, etc. But and it does start small, and that's why I do think people need fear. I like so, or maybe I, at least for me, I, me I don't want to get caught up in in the, nothing. Like because me personally, I can't sleep well at night knowing that ninety percent of the company, ninety five, ninety eight percent, ninety nine percent of the company is fake. Yeah. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I, I'd be, I, cause all I'd be thinking about is, oh man, when am I gonna get found out? Cause I know I'm, I'm not operating right, you know. Um, so, um, and people, maybe sometimes people, I know me, I guess I overestimate how many people are thinking what I'm thinking, which is like, yeah, okay, like for example, I, I, I'm in the security business. That means I see vulnerabilities all day long, you know. Um, it's in my, it's in my best interest to though to create a security company in which case we help people patch those things up and you know protect themselves not the other way around where i see vulnerabilities and try to take advantage of them because it's just how it is like i don't like that's just not i don't know you know it's it's uh but i do think it starts small and uh in these cases i think you know it starts small but then sometimes people they start getting away with it and it gets bigger and they get away with that and that gets bigger and then they keep pushing it i think maybe he just kept pushing this and I don't know. I guess the question everyone wonders is like, at what point did you think it was all going to fall? Now, at least that's what I wonder. I don't know. Like, My man's better. He better hire a good attorney. It's all going to fall. But uh, yeah, we should wrap up. We're a little bit over. One, two, three, yeah, for sure. Four.